Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining me on this session. So today, I'll speak about Envoy. I guess most of you have heard about Envoy. Maybe you're using this uh, as a runtime under the hood on a gateway solution or, or a service mesh solution. And the goal of this talk is for you to better understand the, the concepts and how to best work with Envoy. Right. So I'm just getting started. Uh, what is Envoy? It's a good question. So, uh, as you might know, it's a modern proxy. Um, but what I call a proxy, uh, you all know that it's basically um, pieces of software helping you route the traffic between a downstream client and a, an upstream service. I'm sure most of you have already used Nginx or HAProxy or Apache back in the days. And the main capabilities you would find in such proxies are uh, traffic control, security, access logging, and um, most likely caching. That's the main capabilities I'm, I was able to rem remember from these, uh, these tools. But what's different with Envoy is that it is a cloud native proxy. And what I mean by cloud native is, you know, these 12 factor apps, uh, all, the, all these uh, principles that make a software um, the, working the same in all environments, like non production, production that is uh, easily containerizable, that comes with metrics out of the box, that can be configured with uh, environment variables with external configuration, you know, all, all the things that make um, software work best in a container environment, right? So, um, yeah, <laughs> okay, I hope it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to Clear out. All right, funny one. At least you can see the globe, uh, blob <laughs> jumping and happy. All right, so uh, I guess you already know that, as, as Flo has explained, that Envoy um, is a sort of engine that you will find both in gateways and also in service mesh. So if you look at the CNCF landscape, um, the, the two kinds of um, s software you will find there with Envoy, uh, again, the gateway. So you maybe have already heard about Contour or MSI Ingress that are both projects uh, moving to the new project called Envoy Gateway, right? Which is a sort of control plane for Envoy when you are uh, in a gateway environment. Another nice project is Glue, which is, again, uh, an API gateway, a Kubernetes one. And on the service mesh side, uh, true popular service mesh platforms are Kuma and Istio. They are both using Envoy as a sidecar to, um, yeah, to, to enforce some policies onto your workloads and the services, right? So uh, just some more context about Envoy. It was first started at Lyft, which is a Uber-like uh, company, uh, maybe eight years ago, and it's now widely used across all the big actors of the internet. As you can see, maybe yes, now uh, it's used <laughs> by Airbnb, Microsoft, Google, uh, and many big, big companies. So you should not be scared about adopting Envoy. And um, I don't know about you, but maybe you, uh, I, I don't know many software that have their own movie or their, their own film. So just like Kubernetes two years ago, uh, which had its own movie created with all the, the history, Envoy has its own movie uh, explaining the history, why and how. And it, it was released, the movie was released uh, in the last KubeCon in Amsterdam, and uh, it definitely worth uh, a watch. Right, so just about me, a few more words. So I'm a Tam with Kong. Um, I've been working uh, with Envoy over the last three years, either on the gateway side or on the mesh side. Um, yes, Kong is the company that is the main contributor behind, behind Kuma. Right, so let's move to the Envoy part, to, the, to the, the, the core of this talk. Why Envoy is so good? So first thing is Envoy was designed to be dynamically configurable. That means that when you had new listeners, new roads, all these kind of things, then the Envoy proxy don't have to restart. So the configuration is just applied dynamically. This is a great design. Also, on the threading side, threading model, uh, which is 100% non-blocking, it's, it's really well designed again. There is a main 
thread in charge of uh, coordinating the other threads and accepting the configuration. And you have worker threads accept, uh, accepting connections on different sockets. And again, um, it, since it's non-blocking, every worker can accept many connections at a time. Another thing about Envoy is that it supports basically all the protocols since it works well with both TCP and UDP on the level four. Uh, it should work with all the level seven protocols uh, and especially with HTTP, it's really great. Um, I will show you why in a minute. It supports all the version of HTTP, 0, 9, 1, 2, 3 now. And when it's about uh, controlling HTTP traffic, it will add automatically additional metrics to, um, to the metrics that are already exposed by Envoy. I will get back to that later. So I will slowly um, go down into the details over the next few slides. And before that, you may, maybe need to know a bit more about the vocabulary or the lexicon that is used in Envoy. And thanks, thanks to this really nice schema from Kedelim, uh, we can get started easily. So on one side, there are the clients, which represent the downstream connections, pro uh, Envoy proxy in the middle, and upstream services on the right. Mm -hmm. OK. So now if we look at the main concepts in Envoy, you will find the listeners, you can have one or many, that will uh, route some stream of bytes through a filter chain, which is basically a, a set of filters. Uh, and then it will push the data to the upstream service, right? So, so far, so good. If we uh, zoom in a little bit more, what you see here is, again, there is this listener concept that will pass the request or the stream of bytes to a network filter chain. So a chain of network filters, just remember that. There is a particular network filter chain called HCM or HTTP Connection Manager. I'll get back to that in a minute. And then uh, using some matchers, we, we, we can decide where the request should be routed among all the clusters known by Envoy, and each cluster represents an upstream service, which can have multiple replicas, so multiple endpoints. And that's why you can see this notion of load balancer on the cluster side, which means client load balancing um, among all the endpoints uh, representing a service, right? Cool. So this is another example of how it, uh, it works. So what you can see here, you can see my mouse, great. Uh, are it's two listeners listening on different IP addresses. So the first listener, for some reason, will route the traffic through different filters and to some upstream services with two endpoints. This uh, second, this listener can also route the, the traffic for this particular IP address to one filter, then another network filter that is the HTTP uh, connection manager having its own subfilters. I will get back to that before routing the request upstream. And the last example is just another listener routing the traffic to some black hole. All right. So now, as I said, there is a particular network filter in the chain that helps transform the stream of bytes into HTTP requests. This is called the HTTP connection manager. Right. It works with many hosts. You can have many routes per host that uh, will be matched with matchers. And again, it works with all the HTTP versions. And this HCM filter has its own set of HTTP filters. So I've, put, uh, I've listed a few HTTP filters there that are really useful and common. Um, both in the gateways uh, deployment and in service mesh deployments. So for instance, there is a built-in HTTP filter that will help you invoke AWS Lambdas functions. Also, that can help you to uh, do some caching, compression, prevent attacks um, like cores or CSERF. Um, one interesting filter, HTTP filter, is the external authorization filter that is designed to call an external authorization service. And I'll get back to that again later. But it's really great for you to enforce and decide if you want to authorize the request or refuse the request, deny it. 
Another type of filters is what we call transcoders. So basically, the JSON gRPC filter helps you to transform REST requests into gRPC requests, where you just have to provide the, the proto buff um, spec. Another one is the JOT filter, help you, helping you validate uh, JOTs, or Lua to help you migrate from other uh, proxies. And the final filter in the HCM is the most important one. It is called the router, and it is the one in charge of, again, matching the, the request with some, uh, let's say, it can match on the host name or on the path or any other header, and so that you can decide where you want to send the request. So the rotor filter will help you achieve that, and also maybe additional capabilities like client load balancing and this kind of things. And last point, important point on the HTM is that it will generate additional metrics because it is HTTP aware. So it will help you generate metrics for errors or um, you know, all these uh, HTTP uh, things. And also, of course, access logs. And it's compliant with uh, tracing. All right. Um, this is more. And I can switch to a bigger screen. Can anyone? Read that, or should I uh, zoom in? OK. Yep, OK. I prepared that. So. All right. <laughs> cool. So this is an Envoy configuration. So there are two ways of configuring Envoy, either statically with this Yammer, or dynamically with the control plane. I'll get back to that in a minute, right? So this static configuration. Um, in this configuration, you will find the key concept I have just mentioned, so the listeners, which will listen on a particular or all the interfaces on the particular port. And I forgot to mention that listeners as well can have their proper filters. So this listener filter called TLS inspector will just decode the SNI header from a request just so that the envoy is aware of the destination, let's say. And then there is the filter chain, remember, the network filter chain. In this network filter chain, there are some filters listed below, but you can also have matchers so that you, you can apply certain filters on certain attributes. And in this case, it's, it is checking that the hostname is acme.com. Also, it is exposing a server certificate, as you can see with a public key and private key. And then comes the series of network filters. Actually, there is just one filter in there, which is the HCM, so transforming the request of the stream of bytes into HTTP requests with nice annotations that are not easy to understand. And it has some more HTTP level options. Also, it enables success logging. And then we have the routes that we're work on different virtual hosts. In this case, it will work on the acme.com virtual host. There are one or more routes. In this case, just one route matching on this slash foo path. And for this path, I want to route the request to this some service upstream cluster, right? And then since I am in the HCM config, I can have additional HTTP level filters. And there is just one, which is the default one, the router HTTP filter that will help me route the request to the upstream service. Now, let me find out what is the some service cluster. So um, I have a cluster section with one cluster named some service that comes with two different endpoints on different IP addresses and ports. All right. So this is basically how uh, Envoy configuration looks like. And this is probably why you don't want to do it by hand. You're not a robot, right? And of course, Envoy, as I said, was designed to work along with a control plane. So how it works, internally, there is a set of APIs that, that help you configure the Envoy proxy. This set of APIs is commonly called XDS. Right, And there are actually different APIs in there. One of them is the route discovery service, which is basically, sorry, okay, which is basically the, um, the endpoint exposed by the control plane listing all the routes 
another one for the listeners, the clusters, the secret, and a few more. And instead of fetching all this information onto different endpoints, you can just use the ADS endpoint, which is aggregated discovery service that will come with all these different concepts at once, right? And also Envoy supports incremental updates instead of, of sending the full con configuration every time. So it's best to start with an existing control plane, but if you want to create your own control plane on top of Envoy, there are two SDKs that can help you getting started, one with Golang and another one with Java. As you can see, there is a little more activity on, on the Golang one. Uh, yeah, that's really nice from the Envoy community. So now, why Envoy is a good candidate for ingress gateways, or gateway, more generally speaking? As I said, there are different filters, either at the, H, um, the level four or level seven with HTTP, different filters that can help you secure the access to your services. I've maybe mentioned some of them, uh, Jot authentication, Core, CSERF, and a few more like rate limiting, which really makes sense for uh, gateways. And the external host filter, again, is really interesting because you can call an external service that you have um, implemented yourself. So you can call it either over HTTP or over gRPC. And depending on the response, you can accept or deny the, the, the request. Uh, again, it's a great candidate for Gateway because it supports all the HTTP versions. It comes with transcoder for uh, gRPC REST or gRPC JSON and gRPC web if you have uh, such applications. And also there are a nice collection of good practices exposed on the Envoy uh, website. Uh, one of them is um, telling you to use the overload, overload manager, sorry, that will basically help you limit the number of downstream connections and to um, stop using certain features when there is much load. And all these uh, practices are listed on this website. Why Envoy is a good candidate as a mesh sidecar? So again, Envoy was designed to be configured by a control plane. And what is nice there is that each and every Envoy sidecar or runtime will be aware of all the other services in your cluster. So that will help uh, to populate the clusters in the Envoy configuration. And the discovery of all the other services is basically done by the control plane that is then pushing the information to the, all the Envoy runtimes. Uh, also, with the control plane, you can easily rotate the certificates if you are using MTLS. And the, the most important thing with a mesh is that developers want to delegate certain functionalities or features to the underlying mesh platform. Basically, you probably don't want to re-implement resilience capabilities like circuit breaker, retries in each and every microservice, and you would like the mesh platform to take care of that so that you can just focus on the business logic. And this is the same story for traffic control. You might want the mesh platform to be in charge of client balancing, depending on the health of each upstream service. And also, it will help you to do some uh, progressive rollout, like Canary rollout, or any sort of um, diff uh, rollout architecture. And with a control plane, uh, sorry, with a mesh, of course, you can easily implement a zero trust architecture using identities that are allocated to each and every service or workload. And based on what we call generally authorization policies, you can choose if service A can talk to service B or not, or to service C, and such things. And you will do all of that using generally Kubernetes CRDs that are then translated into Envoy configuration. And the architecture for allocating unique identities to each and every service or workload is called Spiffy. Really interesting. Well. And this is interesting. Um, I have some experience with uh, this product. So Istio, Kuma, and also the Envoy Gateway, uh, which is compliant with the Gateway API, I think most of you have heard about. And 
what I found interesting is showing you how it actually works under the hood. So when you use CRDs like gateway or mesh gateway or this kind of CRDs in a Kubernetes environment, what happens is that this configuration, these CRDs are translated into Envoy listeners by the control plane. Same story with the routes. So you will use this kind of CRDs that are translated into Envoy routes. And for Envoy to know about the upstream services that are available or the clusters, then this is generally the control plane that will discover all the services and push this information to the Envoy runtime. Sorry, maybe it's my connector. Let me double check. Switch it off and on. All right, just a few seconds. <laughs> Same story. Um, again, the, the control plane will push all the information to Envoy uh, using this main concept that I have explained before. So the, the listener, the routes, and the cluster. I, li I like this, this one. OK, uh, and if you are not yet convinced about choosing Envoy, let me just repeat again that it comes with a lot of metrics out of the box. So at the connection level, the route level, the upstream cluster level, at many different levels globally as well that are by default exposed in a raw format, but also uh, in the Prometheus format. Envoy supports uh, all the main providers for tracing. It is really efficient uh, from a performance standpoint because it's written in C++, I have, as I have said also, uh, in a non-blocking model. Uh, it is already adopted by all the major actors of the internet, and also it is extensible. Uh, it supports WebAssembly if you want to add more capabilities to your uh, Envoy runtime. Also, one common way of extending Envoy to enforce authentication or authorization is to use this XOF filter that can call an external authorization service, like, for instance, open an open policy agent, where you can implement your authorization logic easily with the Rego language. And also, if you are migrating away from a Lua-based proxy, you can use the Lua filter. Good. I will show you a few metrics in a minute. Just before that, uh, a few tricks about debugging. So Envoy, if you want so, if you enable that in the default configuration of Envoy, Envoy can come with an admin interface, and there is a quick snapshot here, where you can access some information that are known by Envoy at runtime, like the client certificates, the list of clusters it is aware of, the full config dump, uh, listeners interesting, so that you can ensure that there is an active listener in your Envoy instance. And this is pretty handy. Now I will just show you how it looks like uh, for real. So this is, I have an instance Envoy running. Uh, and I have just um, port forwarded, or I'm just access, access, accessing the admin port of my Envoy instance. So you can find all these nice endpoints with the stats as well. And if we take a look at the stats, what we see here, let me increase the size, but it's not that important, is my some service cluster with some default metrics. So I have some metrics uh, showing me the state of the circuit breaker of uh, HTTP 1, because I was using HTTP 1, of the client load balancing feature of the health. So there is one upstream cluster, one, one endpoint in my cluster that is healthy, right? Uh, and some additional metrics, both at the connection level and also at the HTTP level, because here it's about request and not any more connections. And you can see we can list, I don't know, the, the number of completed requests, retries, and all, all of these nice things. So this just comes by default. And I also can find more global metrics. So there is, as you can see, a lot of things just with this small configuration file. And the nice thing about the HTTP level is that 
in the website, you can find all the metrics or statistics that are generated for at the upstream at the cluster level. If you enable, if you use some features like health checks or outlier detection, so if I click the health check one, and if I have configured health check on my upstream cluster, then I will have all these additional metrics. And it's the same principle for outlier detection. So is my upstream service is returning 500 errors? Maybe I want to. Um, to rem remove it from the upstream cluster, same story with circuit breaker and so on. You get the idea. Cool. Um, another nice thing that I encourage you to do when you use Envoy or control plane that is help you, helping you run Envoy is to use the response flag command in the access logs because, uh, let me go back to it, response flag. It comes with a lot of interesting, interesting information. So, if you are running and uh, if you are using the HCM, the HTTP Connection Manager, you will have additional. Uh, so, you have this information in each and every access log. If you find the short name UH, it's because the upstream service is not healthy. You see, and also you can have many nice information, as you can see here about the error and the, the reason of the error. So it can be about uh, overload manager, rate limit service error, unauthorized external service if you are using the external of service. As you can see, it's really nice to know where your error comes from, either from the downstream client or for, from the upstream service, for instance. Really handy to, to know about that. Um, running on soon out of time. so. You can also access the full config dump either by using the admin interface, using this endpoint config dump, or using uh, CLIs like Istio CTL, Envoy Gateway CTL, or Glue CTL. This is um, a good practice. Last slide, I think. Yep. So if you take a rest for you, uh, if you are not using Envoy yet, I would suggest you to start with. Um, these two different solutions, either if you are looking for a gateway solution or a mesh solution. So Envoy Gateway is um, easy to use and just maybe one year old solution built on top of Envoy for the gateway architecture. And Kuma is a little bit more older, like maybe four or five years. It is a service mesh platform that is really easy to use and that is also compliant with the Gateway API and will help you do really nice things easily. Um, what we have done during the, what we have seen during this session was uh, the key concepts, so listener, HTTP connection manager, filters, clusters, all of this. If you're interested to, in knowing more about Envoy, there is a nice documentation page on the Envoy documentation, which is named Life of a Request, where you can better understand the role of the filters and all of this. Uh, you should use the admin interface when you want to troubleshoot um, issues or, of course, leverage your metrics. Feel free to use the doc and Envoy is the de facto proxy for cloud native platforms. Now you get it. And you can join the Envoy community Slack with this link. That's all I have. And just a last word about Envoy. There is a co-located event uh, during the, la the next Cube event in November in the USA, if you are interested in, in knowing more about Envoy again. That's it. I have maybe just two minutes left, so happy to take the questions. Excellent. Thank you very much. I want to ask the next speakers if they can, if they are not mic'd up yet, Thorsten and Mirna, if you can go to the side and, and sort of get mic'd up, that would be epic while we're taking some questions for you, Baptiste. Uh, so let's see if there's some questions. We're using Slido, so just as you've been using Slido before is how you can use it now. Uh, let's see what we have. We don't have a lot yet. Are you going to EnvoyCon? I wish you got your, you I got your wish tickets? Not, yeah, sure. You, not sure. OK, might still. <laughs> Excellent. So we have a couple of questions coming in. Let's see. I need to, I need to approve all of you. All right. Is, um, 
is Envoy operating on the outer edge, meaning it's the first stop for clients slash public traffic. OK. Um, is my mic OK? Yep. Okay. I can still hear you. Well. <laughs> uh, well, what I don't know what you mean by outer edge, but basically, yes, there are these two models. Either Envoy is deployed at the gateway level, so basically like an ingress controller. Uh, so it's the, the the first stop when you enter the cluster, and this is where you can decide how to route the request. Uh, if you are exposing this Envoy instance with um, a, load a load balancer service, for instance. I hope it helps. Excellent. All right. Uh, we answered that one. Um, can you point out the main differences to traffic? Right. So to me, traffic is an ing another ingress controller, just like um, Glue or maybe Envoy Gateway. So the goal of these um, tools are to help you configure Envoy without typing YAML configuration. And to configure Envoy, then you will use generally Kubernetes CRDs. This is how I would compare it to traffic. So Envoy is just the runtime, and you need a control plane. Right. How does Envoy compare to, for instance, a, a HI proxy from a performance and resource perspective? That's a good question. I think it's equivalent. What I think from my experience is that Envoy is good enough to handle dozens of thousands of requests per second when we are at the HTTP level, which is just very good, just like I think HA proxy. So once you reach this level of performance, you don't really care if it's either 80,000 or just 30,000, then you can just scale Envoy horizontally, and it's, it's good. Right. How does Envoy manage token exchange with uh, multiple IDSPs, particularly through the use of filters? Does yeah. it use uh, caching for tokens? That's a good question. So it will all depend on how the control plane was implemented and how it is pushing the configuration to Envoy. Let me just give you an example. If in Envoy you have multiple, you are routing multiple APIs or you have multiple routes, then for each route you can configure a different X of filter that will connect to maybe different IDPs, and then you can enforce. Um, things like OIDC, or just use the JOT filter to verify the JOT signature against um, an, a, a remote GWKS endpoint. So again, you can have generally one JOT filter and one XO filter per route. Or you can have one XO filter configuration for all the routes. You decide on, on the granularity. All right. Well, thank you very much. I think that's it for the questions right now, uh, because I see a lot of people are trying to get into this room, and there might be some people that are getting out of this room. So let's give it up for Baptiste one more time, and uh, you. see you next time. <laughs>